In your feel good Friday, a generous gesture from a country music legend, Dolly Parton. She's helping in the search for a coronavirus cure while also launching a weekly web series. Hello, I'm Dolly Parton, the book lady from the Imagination Library. That's how not a lot of kids know her. The 74 year old singer began reading bedtime stories to kids last night online. It's a weekly thing she started that will be live streamed on her Imagination Library social media channels for the next 10 weeks. Parton's also fighting another front of the coronavirus crisis, donating $1 million to Vanderbilt University to help further research for a cure. A documentary, the library that Dolly built, was supposed to debut in theaters yesterday, but instead, Dolly launched her bedtime stories last night, which is just fantastic. And you know a lot of adults enjoyed that as well. I'm excited to watch it. I'm sure you are. I believe she was reading The Little Engine That Could. Yes. Which, if I'm not mistaken, is the first book that kids in the Imagination Library program receive. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she could read the classified sections, and I, I would still listen. People would tune right? into her. Absolutely, oh, yeah. they would. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, meanwhile, feeling great outside right now, but experts at Colorado State University already looking ahead to hurricane season. They are forecasting an above average season with 16 total named storms, eight of which would be hurricanes, four of which would be category three or higher. Doesn't mean everyone is going to make landfall in the U.S., but that's what they're predicting as of right now. Locally in south side, looking like a great day for us guys. Breezy and warmer, lots of sunshine and temperatures for all of us from Martinsville to Chatham to Charlotte Courthouse nearing the 70 degree mark. We'll do it again tomorrow and then a three peat performance by Sunday temperatures near uh, 70. Maybe a few stray showers Sunday and Monday afternoons. Better chance probably coming in Tuesday, but it's at that point we start to see high temperatures in south side nearing 80 degrees with lows at night about 55 to 60. And it is 526 restaurant support. The state official letting you know it is always time for takeout. Mm, I agree with that. Plus, these times can be difficult to talk about, especially with kids. The advice from experts on how to discuss COVID-19 at home. Plus, outdoor shutdowns, the green areas that now are putting up a red light.
This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 5, working for you. Changes to school meal programs to, to stay at home guidelines. We've asked our principals to review those lists as well to make sure nobody gets left behind. How one local district is going parent to parent to calm fears of hunger. Unfamiliar filing as hundreds go on unemployment for the first time ever. Don't want to lose track of what weeks have been claimed. What you need to know to make sure money is headed your way. Confusion over stimulus checks settled. What a Virginia senator says Social Security recipients must do to get money. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. We made it to Friday. Thanks. I'm not usually one to Goodness. like hurry to Friday, right. but I feel like that's like a milestone. Like uh -huh. make it to Friday. You've made it through another week <laughs> of craziness <laughs> and crazy Zoom meetings <laughs> and whatever and, and right else now, you've been doing. Ton of craziness. <laughs> I know. I know. Hopefully we can get outside this weekend. I know we are looking for every opportunity to get out and about, Chris. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you know, we got plenty of time to do just that, guys. Looking beautiful out there and starting out pretty chilly as we give you a live look from our Virginia Tech sky cam looking over a calm Blacksburg right now. Uh, pollen levels, they're going to stay pretty high as we update you on that this morning. Maple, birch and now oak. Oak is a pretty strong allergen, so something to keep in mind as pollen levels are at about 11.4 out of 12 in the highlands though things are looking great the forecast today could not be any better low to mid 60s for newcastle covington and lexington even middle 50s in hot springs and in monterey we'll do it all again tomorrow with more sunshine a few more clouds coming in sunday temperatures in the highlands mid to upper 60s few spotty showers on sunday and monday and then perhaps a better chance coming in tuesday but look at all that warm air high temperatures in the 70s each day next week Roto County Public Schools is scaling back its food delivery program to maintain social distancing. Instead, it's encouraging families to pick up meals at one of eight schools in the county. The changes will take effect after spring break next week. School Superintendent Ken Nicely says the school district has more control over how it hands out food at sites than when it's delivering. He said it's all about keeping staff and students safe. We've heard from at the state and national level that the next month is going to be pretty tough. And so anything that we can do on our end to do our part to protect our families as well as our employees, we want to do that. Roto County Schools will still make special deliveries if you call ahead and have no means of transportation to get to the pickup sites. Unemployment claims hitting a stunning new high. More than 112,000 Virginians are among the 6.6 .6 million Americans filing just last week. There's still a lot of confusion from people who are unemployed over how and when local unemployment offices can give out benefits to people who never qualified before now. The first step, file your claim by either calling one 866 832 2363, that number there on your screen, we'll leave it up for a while, or online through the Virginia Workforce Connection website. You'll have to provide some personal information like social security number, dates of employment, and employer contact info. After that, you have to remember to claim your benefits every week by visiting that same website or by calling 1-800-897-5630. Otherwise, you won't get paid. The Roanoke Unemployment Office says this is unchartered territory for everyone. This is pretty unique <laughs> in, in, by me, the volume. Yes, we're, we're, of course, you know, talking to people who ha have never experienced unemployment before. Under the Federal CARES Act, self-employed or gig workers who wouldn't have qualified before can earn up to half the weekly average of other unemployed workers. The IRS has reversed itself on requiring people in Social Security to file tax returns to get stimulus checks. Now, they will not have to file a return to get the $1,200 the government is sending out automatically to most people. The decision comes as a group of U.S. senators said the move was an undue burden on the elderly and disabled people. Senator Mark Warner was one who urged the IRS to change the decision. We want to make sure that these direct payments to Virginians get out with the least amount of bureaucracy possible. The idea that folks who are on Social Security or Social Security disability were going to have to go through and file a form made no sense. 
Social Security recipients with direct deposit will have the money automatically deposited into their accounts. Others will be mailed a check. It's putting a lot of people at ease this morning. The Carvin's Code boat landing in Roanoke County will have restricted access until further notice. Parking will be limited based on the number of visitors, but trails will remain open. Rental boats are no longer available and picnic shelters and restrooms are closed. According to the Western Virginia Water Authority, if guests don't follow social distancing guidelines, it will be forced to close the area entirely. On the Blue Ridge Parkway, several picnic areas scheduled to open this month will not. The James River Picnic Area in Virginia will remain closed along with several in North Carolina. In the George Washington and Jefferson National Forest, day use areas are now temporarily closed, including picnic sites, shooting ranges and swimming sites, as well as campgrounds, cabins and trail shelters. 536 if you're having to head out this morning temperature starting in the 40s we're at least a little more quick to warm up today. We're in the middle 50s by 11 a.m. Just a sign of things to come as we see high temperatures in the low to mid 60s in the New River Valley areas like rural retreat Pulaski Hillsville Blacksburg at 63 Floyd and Whitville at 61. We're using video calling a lot more especially for work. Look at this. What one manager did, she turned herself into a peanut that you want to make sure you don't accidentally do. <laughs> right? Uh, I think that's fantastic, actually. <laughs> and staying safe online with big numbers working from home, what you need to know about remote meeting apps. Our jobs as first informers have never been more critical. We're doing everything we can to help keep you feeling safe and informed. As we continue to cover this unbelievable situation, WSLS 10 News is committed to sharing critical coronavirus updates in a responsible way. As everything around us rapidly changes, remember to stay calm and to keep your social distance. We'll get through this together. WSLS 10 News, working for you. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. New this morning with video chatting comes the risk of video hijacking and what experts are now calling Zoom bombing. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joins us live with how you can protect your family 
and your computer. And a lot of us are doing these Zoom meetings now, Megan. That's so true. And these hijackings are happening across the country. And it's something the FBI and the Better Business Bureau are warning people about. Here's an example of two cases that happened in Massachusetts recently. One happened during a teleconference class on Zoom where a stranger dialed in shouting profanity in the teacher's home address. Another was a video disturbance where someone joined the video call and started showing swastika tattoos. Something else you need to look out for, fake websites that may look like a legitimate video conferencing site. Be very careful when you receive something, an invitation to attend a video conference. Um, it either should be from an organization you're familiar with or from somebody that you know before you click on a link. Also, take a look at that URL and make sure the spelling isn't off by a couple of letters. This all might sound a little scary, especially because we depend on video chatting so much right now, but we'll get through it together. In the next 30 minutes, the Better Business Bureau shares steps you can take to prevent video hijacks. I'm Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. I know a lot of local teachers warned about this because they're using it to chat with their classes, Chris. Mm, yeah. And, uh, ooh, that would be not a surprise you want it. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, meanwhile, as we're starting out the morning, things looking great for you. A lot of sunshine out there. Uh, at least after sunrise. It's clear sky right now, but a lot of sunshine for the afternoon. Lynchburg area looking at high temperatures today, right around 65 to 70 degrees. But we are tracking a strong cold front in the nation's midsection. What that means for us. Plus, we go beyond the seven day and just see what the trends are looking like as we approach Easter Sunday. That's coming up in about five minutes. Coming up on 542, three meals and multiple snacks a day at home. That's now the reality for thousands as schools are closed. We're working for you, taking your questions about kids snacking and the stress to the experts. Explaining a pandemic, the best way to talk to your kids about coronavirus. Five forty four new this morning. 
three meals and multiple snacks a day at home. That's now the reality for thousands of parents across Virginia as schools are closed and the whole family is staying home. Many parents are asking questions about why their kids are not eating enough or eating too much every day. We're working for you, taking your questions to the experts. I talked to the women behind Feeding Little, a popular Instagram page for families. They say parents are really worried and anxious right now. I just remind parents that this isn't about being perfect. It really never is with nutrition, but especially right now, we just have to work with what we've got and try our best in these moments. And sometimes we eat cereal for dinner and that's okay. Dietitian Megan McNamee says snacking is also a big question for families. Kids are snacking a lot at home. She says there needs to be a routine. Offer three meals and two to three snacks a day. Try to step back and realize why they might be snacking. Are they snacking because they're kind of hungry? Are they not really getting filling meals? And then also, are they snacking because it's kind of become this habit? Every time they sit on the couch to watch a movie, they grab a snack. Um, it's all about routine and repetition here. So the more you can add that structure back to your family's day, the better. There are some strategies to help kids eat things they're not used to eating. You'll find that and much more from the Feeding Littles team on WSLS.com. We're working for you to keep you informed and answer any questions you have about the coronavirus. On Monday from 7 to 8 now, WSLS 10 along with Roanoke Lynchburg television stations will air coronavirus, a community conversation. We partnered with Carillion Clinic, Lewis Gale Medical Center, Salem VA Medical Center, and the Virginia Department of Health. Medical experts will answer your questions about the coronavirus. If you have one you'd like to submit, head to our website. WSLS.com slash coronavirus questions. That's again coming up Monday here at 7 on WSLS 10, WSLS.com and the 10 News Facebook page. You may not be able to sit down at your favorite restaurant, but this week is all about takeout. Virginia is for Restaurant Lovers Week comes to a close this weekend. And Governor Ralph Northam is encouraging people to take part in order delivery. Be sure to use the hashtag Virginia Eats Local to share your delicious eats. And if you're looking for a local restaurant to support, we've made it easy for you. We've compiled a list of places still open. Just head to our website, WSLS.com slash coronavirus. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. And another fairly cool start to the morning, which has these two little cuties enjoying the fireplace. Uh, great shot here for our picture of the day. Love these two. They're just adorable. I know they're just look at those little faces. Greg Wood, thank you very much for sharing that picture with us. Eventually we get warmer by the afternoon, but temperatures this morning starting out in the 40s. That's actually how the wind is helping us out, whereas we thought the wind might calm down a little overnight, give us the chance for patchy frost. That really hasn't happened, so area wide we're in the 40s, but look out toward the west. Very strong cold front. We're in the low to mid 30s in Kansas City, Oklahoma City, Denver 15. Yeah, so you might be worried that cold air is coming our way. I can tell you right now it's not that cold air retreating behind this cold front as it starts to weaken a little bit. Here we are by tomorrow, still feeling like spring, even by Sunday, still feeling as we should in the mid to upper 60s. But this little system right here may give us just a few stray showers as we head into Sunday. So as we look ahead toward the weekend, more of the same each day. Lots of sunshine today, 65 to 70 degrees area wide. That's also going to be the case tomorrow maybe a few fair weather cumulus clouds developing throughout the afternoon by Sunday. Again, we're warm, maybe a few hit or miss showers, but uh, not enough to keep you indoors all day. Looking ahead to next week, though, the jet stream rising toward the north that implies more warm air. So through Tuesday, high temperature 70 to near 80 degrees. But want to give you a little bit of a preview of what to expect for Easter weekend. This is good Friday jet stream dipping to the south. That would imply some cooler air, some gusty wind. And with the jet stream in close proximity to us, that is kind of the railroad for storm systems. That's what we're going to have to watch out for by Easter Sunday. So nothing specific just yet, but the trend at least going 
becoming a little cooler and perhaps a little wetter as we head toward Easter Sunday. For the New River Valley, though, this weekend, enjoy it. Temperatures in the 60s each day, upper 30s and lower 40s each night. Maybe a few thunderstorms coming in on Monday and Tuesday, but we warm things up into the middle 70s, slightly cooler by next Thursday with high temperatures in the upper 60s. And for the Roanoke Valley, more of the same upper 60s today, tomorrow near 70 Sunday, low to mid 70s by Monday, maybe a stray shower or two with a better chance for showers and storms coming in Tuesday. We're very warm through the middle of next week and starting to dry things out, become a little breezy by later next week. Time now 550. Let's get a check of some drive times for you and things are looking good out there. Christiansburg to Roanoke 22 minutes, Lexington to Roanoke 43 minutes. Everything looking clear on 81. We're working for you to answer your coronavirus questions. The Today Show is joining us in this effort with his ongoing series with you today. This morning, medical correspondent Dr. John Torres is here to break down the confusion. Now being associated with the virus. Good morning. People are getting a bit confused because they're hearing about these atypical symptoms of coronavirus and they're wondering what does that mean and can they be something by themselves that show that they have coronavirus? Well, the typical symptoms the vast majority of people have are dry cough, shortness of breath, and fevers. But people are also showing up and doctors are finding out that they have coronavirus with simple symptoms by themselves, usually loss of sense of smell or taste, headaches, stomach problems, including diarrhea. These are the unusual ones that people are having that sometimes crop up by themselves and show that they have coronavirus and doctors are testing for that and finding out that's exactly what's happening. Now, the reason this happens is because everybody's body reacts differently to the virus, much like it does to the flu or any other virus that affects us. The main thing to remember is if you start getting severe shortness of breath or you start noticing chest pain, that's when you need to go to the hospital. But otherwise, most of these can be taken care of at home, including those atypical symptoms that we've been talking about. Dr. Torres will answer your questions about routine health care during the coronavirus, including whether you should take your little ones for their wellness visits. That's coming this morning at 7 on today right here on WSLS 10. Child care facilities across our area have been working hard to keep kids safe and socially distant during this pandemic. But another challenge they face explaining the why behind all the changes. Dr. Tara Mitchell is a licensed clinical psychologist, and she says the best way to approach these changes is through a simple yet honest conversation with children. Well, there's this thing called a virus going around and um, you can think of it like little bugs or like these germs that we can't see. And so they live on like doorknobs and different surfaces. And so we want to wash our hands a lot and we want to keep our distance with other people. Dr. Mitchell also says parents should feel free to give their kids some extra snuggle time at night to make up for the lack of positive touch they're receiving throughout the day. Of course, she warns that parents need to be practicing proper hygiene during this time. Many of us are using online video platforms to host meetings, but there are some unintended consequences. One manager turned into a peanut. Look at this. <laughs> Sarah Baker was holding a meeting on Teams, and you see her there on the left. She's a peanut. One of the girls that works with her told her about a filter program, and Sarah thought it would be fun to jazz up a meeting with rosy cheeks or long eyelashes. But the first meeting, it got stuck on the peanut, and she couldn't get it off. She had to do the whole meeting as that peanut. Her coworkers said it was just the comedic relief they need it. So be careful with those uh, filters and all those buttons that you click during those meetings. Yeah, they Whoops. can get you in trouble. It's all fun and games until you turn into food. <laughs> 553 staying connected. The dance studio finding innovative ways to keep in touch with its students. Uh, well, with their, uh... Hey, look, Rachel, what's your favorite segment? It's so weird. That's so weird. I, I just, yeah, it's so weird. Why is it weird? 
The biggest reward is getting the pictures back that the parents send of their kids and saying they miss it. So we're starting a feel good VA segment with the hashtag feel good VA, but it's in the evenings. Which and is it's fine. not related to or have the same look as. Right. So it's like Five fifty six. Now we can all use a little good news right now. Amen to that, right? <laughs> yes. That's our goal with Feel Good Virginia Stories. Our Roanoke County Dance Studio is turning to virtual class in the face of the COVID nineteen shutdown. Lynn Hungate co-owns the Ardell Stone School of Dancing. Her mom started it more than fifty years ago, but. They can't have the students in the building right now, so she called on her husband, who is a professional photographer, to help. And together, they've brought the classes online so students don't miss a beat. The biggest reward is getting the pictures back that the parents send of their kids and saying they miss it. Oh, families have been sending in stuff like this, rehearsals at home, even getting pets involved. <laughs> Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, when you that. see something that's positive happening in your neighborhood or on social media, make sure to tag it hashtag feel good VA. We want to see all the good stuff right we now, do. Chris. Yeah, especially like a good forecast, which luckily we've got that for you, uh, especially since you got the kids home, maybe fly a kite, especially on a day like today because of the wind. Lots of sunshine, a little breezy temperatures by this afternoon looking just about perfect with highs in the mid to upper 60s. Remember, anytime you want an update on the forecast, make sure that you take us on the go with you, your local weather authority app. That way you can keep an eye on the radar. Also get customized video updates from us sent straight to your phone. Ahead at six, keep it a close eye on the outdoors. The county watching to see if there's social distancing in their parks or if they need to be shut down. And surgical masks on the way to America's center of the coronavirus. What the mayor is saying there that the White House is not. When we're back on Virginia Today, right here on 10 News.
Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Live from WSLS, this is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Coronavirus spreading among first responders. The city with more than two dozen firefighters under quarantine. The death toll still rising at a Central Virginia health care facility. The challenge is that there's not enough PPE on the ground for everybody to use. Why health officials say this spread was hard to spot until it was too late. And a new police chief thrown into a baptism by fire. Our focus will be uh, being an active part of the solution. Now the new head of the Roanoke PD plans to enforce the city's shutdown of parks. Good morning to you. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. Happy Friday. Oh, happy Friday indeed. It has been. <laughs> I don't know about you, but the, the weeks seem to get a little bit longer and a little bit yeah. longer and a, sometimes a little harder to make it through. But we're going to make it through this last day of the work week. And as we look ahead to the weekend, we're hoping the weather's going to be nice for us. Chris, I've got some more steaks. I need to grill them. I want to grill them. Mm. Yeah, them. I'll, I'll be right over. Just yes. let me know when. Come on. <laughs> Six feet apart. We can Absolutely, yeah. Nice start to the morning here as we're getting ready and uh, things on 220 picking up a little bit there. Clear sky overhead and temperatures starting in the 40s in the Roanoke Valley. As we head into the afternoon, temperatures right about 65 to 70 degrees. You see Daleville at 65, Salem at 70, Rocky Mount 67 with Smith Mountain Lake and Roanoke at 68 this afternoon. The only downside to this is yeah, allergy levels are going to be or pollen levels going to be up there with maple, birch, juniper and oak actually now added to the equation. So just something to think about as we get the morning started off. Two Lynchburg firefighters being tested for the coronavirus after coming in contact with a patient that tested positive. Lynchburg Fire Chief Greg Wormser said the two started showing symptoms and are now in quarantine. As a precaution, the 15 firefighters who worked th with them are now also under self quarantine, but not showing symptoms. All of these firefighters were at Fire Station 3 on Fort Avenue, which will close for deep cleaning. As we reported Tuesday, nine firefighters from Station 1 are now under quarantine after one tested positive. It's scheduled to reopen today after closing for deep cleaning. The chief says off-duty firefighters are covering for the firefighters who are quarantined. The Virginia Department of Health now says COVID-19 is considered to be widespread in Virginia. This means there is a higher rate of community transmission when people get sick without having a direct contact with someone who has the virus. Here's what the map of Virginia looks like as of this morning. There are more than 1700 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 41 deaths. And breaking this down locally for you, there are 73 confirmed cases here in our viewing area by the Virginia Department of Health. Lynchburg and Roanoke have the highest number with nine apiece. Botata added two. Danville added three more cases, bringing its total to seven. Franklin and Amherst counties each saw another confirmed case. Allegheny County also saw another case in Salem now has its first confirmed case as well. We have a breakdown of that on our website, WSLS.com. Virginia officials will contact all long term care facilities today to try to control the spread of coronavirus after more than after five more people rather have died at rehab and health care center in Henrico County. There are now 92 positive cases at the Canterbury facility. The total number of deaths has climbed to 16. Health officials say the new guidance is coming in every day on the best way to recognize and respond to the virus. Until a couple days ago, we were saying 
basically the time you develop symptoms is the time that you're, you're most uh, you know, you know, you're most contagious, but we are now backing up our investigations for a 48-hour period beyond the, be, be, before that where you're not showing any symptoms. That's important to know because 53 of the people who tested positive at the Canterbury are not showing any symptoms, yet they're still able to spread the virus to others. That's primarily because the close contact that exists in long-term care facilities in general. 35 people who live there have tested negative. Governor Ralph Northam will provide an update on the coronavirus response in Virginia. That's coming your way at 2 this afternoon. You can watch it live right here on WSLS 10 and our website, WSLS.com. Happening today, the city of Roanoke closing all greenways at 8 this morning. New Roanoke City Police Chief Sam Roman says it will be a challenge to patrol playgrounds and greenways, but he says it's not about making a bunch of arrests. Our goal is not to go out and charge in as many instances as we can. Uh, the goal is to ensure that we educate. The chief says people need to approach these restrictions with a spirit of cooperation. Bruno County is also taking a close look at possible new rules regarding exercise outdoors. The county's fire chief said most parks and greenways are still open, but they are monitoring them this weekend to make sure people don't get too close. They do say they haven't seen many people violating social distancing guidelines. We will have um, some county staff out this weekend that will be monitoring the activities at the parks to make sure that people are doing what we need to do to all stay safe in this public health emergency. And I, I really just hope people can comply with that. We think we can, and we think you can. The county's recreation centers are already closed. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is telling people, sick or not, to wear face masks anytime when going out in public. The president is expected to make recommendations concerning masks later today. As John Lawrence reports, the debate on their effectiveness is still going strong. The Trump administration says it'll soon release nationwide recommendations on wearing face masks during the COVID-19 pandemic. I don't think they'll be mandatory because some people don't want to do that. But uh, if people want it, as an example on the masks, if people want it to wear them, they can. Some officials support the idea of people covering up. It's more not to protect you from getting infected, right. but to protect a person from getting infected from you. Others, like the World Health Organization, stress masks should be prioritized for healthcare workers. These are people who are putting their lives on the line to help us uh, to care for other people, and they must be protected. As the medical world deals with a constantly increasing number of infected patients, supplies are running low in some places. At the current burn rate, we have about six days uh, of ventilators in our stockpile. New York is hardest hit with the most cases in the nation, but other states are also in need. We are continuing to demand that this president step up and use his power and authority to help people in New Jersey and across this nation. The president says the states could have helped their own cause by stocking up in advance. It's like one of those things. They waited. They didn't want to spend the money because they thought this would never happen. John Lawrence, 10 News, working for you. Today, an 18-wheeler is expected to deliver 300,000 N95 masks designated for New York to the Javits Convention Center, which is now a makeshift hospital. The N95 masks are part of a shipment of 1.7 million that New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft brought in from China on his private plane. A local city council member is trying to make sure people in his city who need masks to help protect themselves from the coronavirus have them. Danny Turner, Turner volunteered to sell and deliver masks for a local business owner who made them. When Turner saw Martinsville police officers on a community walk, he stopped them and gave them some. He says he's honored to be able to help. Put it on Facebook and it kind of exploded. Uh been delivering masks all morning long. She's the hero here. She was making masks before she even knew she had a market for them. The police department plans to hand out the masks to people in need during their next community walk. 
New this morning, social distancing is forcing people to depend on video chatting sites a lot more, as I'm sure you have gotten very familiar with already. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joining us now live this morning with how not to become a victim of video hijacking. This is a scary thing I hadn't heard of before, Megan. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, if you're not super tech savvy like me, this might be your first time even hearing about video hijacking and Zoom bombings. And that's the Better Business Bureau's concern. There are many businesses, organizations, and schools using video chat that didn't before and may not know how to protect themselves. If you're not careful, someone can hijack your screen and put anything on the screen. They can even record your session, but you can prevent that by requiring a meeting password. Don't share the unique ID publicly. Allow only hosts to share their screen and create an invite-only meeting. It's just very important that we don't just assume it's all going to work like it should without us taking some steps uh, to set up you know, our profile correctly and to use some of the security opportunities that are available. Those aren't the only actions you can take to protect yourself. We'll have a full list on our website, WSLS.com. With how popular video chatting has become in the last two weeks, the Better Business Bureau says this is an opportunity for phishing emails, too. Coming up in the next half hour, we show you what to look out for. I'm Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. 611 now, and what's news today? The Roanoke Blacksburg Technology Council hosts a webinar at 10 this morning. Congressman Morgan Griffith will explain the recently approved Federal CARES Act. The escalators in the walkway bridge over the railroad tracks in Roanoke are temporarily closed for repairs through this afternoon. You're asked to use the elevator in the tower's parking garage. The Academy Center of the Arts will hold its monthly First Fridays exhibition virtually. It will feature the 2020 National Juried Art Exhibition. You'll be able to see the photos on the center's Facebook page. The center's currently closed due to the governor's executive order. 611 now still to come this morning. Know the symptoms. The doctor explains common COVID-19 symptoms along with the rare ones to look out for. And new at 645, changing eating habits now that schools are closed. How to stop your children from snacking so much and how to give yourself a little grace right now. I'll need that. I definitely need that. Plus, more people are turning to telemedicine now more than ever. How it helps the medical system. And we could use some good news. Luckily, that comes in the form of the forecast. Temperature 65 to 70 for most of the area. Maybe slightly cooler in parts of the New River Valley. Breezy with sunshine today. We show you just how strong the wind gets and how it compares to yesterday. Plus, some planets to look for in the nighttime and morning sky. We'll show you when and where to look coming up in five minutes.
614 in health headlines. Many of us are doing everything we can to help prevent the spread of the coronavirus. One of the best ways to keep illnesses from jumping from person to person is through the use of technology or telemedicine. Telemedicine connects doctors and patients in real time by using a web based video service. In many cases, doctors are able to diagnose a condition virtually and recommend treatment. We get that body language, that interaction with the patient to say, I think it would be helpful if we did this. I think we need an x-ray or we need an additional lab test. Or I am concerned that your symptoms are uh, suggestive enough that you need in-person care. These virtual visits keep people away from each other when they're sick, which helps to stop the spread of illness. It also allows people who are well to get questions answered without worry of getting germs. The COVID-19 pandemic is changing Americans' day-to-day -day lives, and it's putting a strain on wireless networks. NBC's Liz McLaughlin shows us how to optimize your home Wi-Fi system. Help me over here, he's blocked. The home is now a one-stop shop. A school, office, gym, movie theater, and arcade, all under one roof. A lot of our focus has been on how uh, kind of this new normal now, how it's affecting our network, and making sure we keep it up for our customers. Verizon says mobile and online traffic has been booming since Americans started to self-isolate. Our uh, fiber broadband network, the usage on that network's up uh, nearly 40 percent. Dramatic surges in games and streaming video could mean extra pressure on home networks, potentially leading to slowdowns and dropouts. Online classes are glitching and then they'll just like shut down and then I can't do my work. To optimize your Wi-Fi, start by tweaking the settings on your router. Enable a setting called prioritization or quality of service or QOS. Think of it as priority boarding for your internet. Parents working from home can get priority over kids playing video games. To improve your Wi-Fi range, you could try an extender for around 20 bucks or shell out a few hundred dollars for a mesh Wi-Fi system. Versus an extender which cuts your speed in half, the mesh network really only degrades it by about 10%. You may also want to check in with your internet service provider. Now many are offering free upgrades and eliminating data caps. It's really just a matter of giving them a call and seeing, seeing what sort of arrangement you can work out. A few ways to make sure your suddenly full house stays connected. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. And we're going to keep the wind around throughout the course of the day today. The same system that soaked us on Tuesday, it's still out there. It's still off the coast of New England, and it's gotten stronger. Not going to give us any rain, but it is pulling in the air, so making things a little windy for us as we go through the day today. Similar to yesterday, we see the sustained wind speed anywhere from about 10 to 20 miles per hour coming in out of the northwest, so accelerating at times down the mountains from about 25 to 35 miles per hour. So. Uh, just remember, don't go burning or anything like that, especially since we have the burn ban in place until 4 p.m. every day this month. Uh, just a nice day, though. Going to be breezy at times, a little cool. Picnic time temperatures upper 50s. Again, flying a kite, that's a great idea on a day like today. Temperatures low to mid 60s. And if you've yet to mow the yard by this afternoon, we're in the mid to upper 60s. Very nice out there. And uh, again, just a little bit of a cool breeze from time to time. Pretty chilly tonight with the wind calming down. Withville down to 39. Blacksburg and Hillsville in the mid 30s, the rest of us in the upper 30s and lower 40s as we get the weekend started out and we start out with a clear sky. That's great news this evening as you'll be able to see Venus uh, in the western sky. So check that out. But not only that, each morning, the next several mornings, we'll be able to see Mars, Jupiter and Saturn kind of changing up their positions relative to each other. And for that, you as well look out toward the west. Meanwhile, as we continue to look out toward the west, another storm system coming in, but this one is much, much weaker. In fact, not a lot of moisture with it, so we'll continue to see the warm air pumping in and maybe just a few stray showers by Sunday afternoon. Really need the good news right now and the good news coming uh, with the forecast 65 to 70 for the Lynchburg area today, tomorrow and Sunday. Slightly warmer Monday, maybe a stray shower. Your better chance of getting wet. 
coming Tuesday afternoon, 75 to 80 by then during the afternoon. That also the case on Wednesday, maybe a stray shower. Then we're dry by next Thursday, a little breezy at times with temperatures in the 70s. And for the Roanoke Valley, mid to upper 60s today and tomorrow near 70 Sunday with a few hit or miss showers possible. We're windy at times on Monday, temperatures in the 70s through much of next week with nighttime lows dropping down into the 50s. But overall, nice looking extended forecast for you. Coming up in the next half hour, we go beyond the seven day forecast and look at the trends toward Easter Sunday. Time now 620. Let's get a check of some drive times for you. And it looks like your drive on I-77 Max Meadows to the North Carolina border. 27 minutes on 221 Bit Mountain to Floyd 28. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. YouTube is working on its own short form video feature. YouTube shorts will function much like TikTok by allowing people to upload brief videos set to music. But shorts users will be able to take advantage of YouTube's vast catalog of licensed music. And American Airlines and Boeing are the latest companies in the airline industry dealing with the fallout from the plunge in global air travel. American Airlines says it made a mistake by offering thousands of employees voluntary leave. Boeing, on the other hand, offered buyouts and early retirements to a number of employees in a move to cut cost. And retailers Walmart, Costco, and Target all seen less traffic in their stores this week as more people stay inside. In the second week in March, the store saw a spike in sales. Costco, in particular, saw a jump of nearly 40 percent compared to last year. But one week later, things did settle down, and Target took the biggest hit, down 20 percent from the third week in March last year. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Scholler from my apartment in New York City. A familiar scene now. We're seeing everybody's houses. Not all heroes wear capes. There are so many people working hard right now to keep us safe. Doctors, nurses, teachers, and parents. We want you to take a break and thank our local heroes. You can download this coloring sheet on WSLS.com. Draw your hero there in that blank space on the bottom and then send it to us. News at WSLS.com or the WSLS 10 Facebook page. If you post your artwork on social media, be sure to tag WSLS 10 so we can share your hero. You could see your drawing right here on Virginia Today. 622 this morning still ahead showing their moves. The dance studio not about to let students slow down. And story time with Dolly, the feel good way she's connecting with kids and giving those fighting for coronavirus vaccine.
In your Feel Good Friday, a generous gesture from a country music legend, Dolly Parton is helping in the search for a coronavirus cure while also launching a weekly web series. Hello, I'm Dolly Parton, the book lady from the Imagination Library. I want you to join me. That's how so many children know her as is the book lady. The 74 year old singer began reading bedtime stories to kids last night online. It's a weekly thing she started that will be